rooms open there, in particular room 114 will be the main where I, uh, I'll just open it up in the morning and then close it after our tutorials. In case we are welcome to use it. Have a meeting. All right, so let's uh, switch gears. Um, so as promised, we are going to have uh, AI and machine learning tutorials. They're going to be given by Thomas uh, Brin from Jefferson Lab. Floor is yours. So before I uh, dive into this, um, I will also do a show of hands. How many people, when they hear Python, think not Snake, but a programming language? How many people are familiar with Python? Okay. <laughs> okay, so we got about everybody. Good, good. Um, one of the difficulties uh, when approaching AI ML is it's one of these like cumulative subject matter. You really can't do machine learning application wise if you don't also know programming. Um, I recently got back into astronomy and it's very similar. I get to combine the expenses of two, two, uh, two hobbies astronomy and photography, if I want to share pictures of what I see. So very much similar uh, vein here. So for those that don't know me, I am an experimentalist. I got my PhD with the LHCB, um, did amplitude analysis. Um, I did a postdoc with uh, Gluex at Jefferson Lab. And um, there, this is where I developed uh, most of my projects that I still maintain today, and where I actually um, two of my applications of AI are deployed at. I'm currently staff scientist, Jefferson Lab. And the key is, I think I got asked to do this because I've actually developed several projects which utilize AI, machine learning, but specifically with an aim of deployment. I'm one of those, I'm, I'm an experimentalist. I don't wanna just pontificate about what AI can do on simulated data. I want a self-driving car. I want the car to drive itself, not think about what might, happen. Um, I'm not a formally trained data scientist, okay? But we all kind of are, right? Because we all take data and then we try to interpret the data and um, that's what I'm doing. So we're all, we're all data scientists really. So AI is, is a really big buzzword. Um, if then statements, technically AI, right? If it's raining, get an umbrella. That's AI, right? Um, what we really mean is machine learning, and that opens up a lot of <laughs> a lot of fanciful things. So I took a bent of everybody here wants to take over the world. Okay, maybe not that. You have some particular problems, and these problems typically are too complex. And by too complex, I mean high, highly dimensional. I hit about five dimensions and. Okay, I have a breathing ball that's changing colors. I can do about five, then it breaks down. If I have a thousand dimensions, I can't do it. You probably can't do it either. That's what I mean by too complex. Um, these problems might also not be well modeled. Model. There may be no analytic solution. You're trying to find the optimum, whatever fuzzy definition of optimum there is. Or maybe it's not feasible. Maybe there's just too much data. Nobody's had time to look at it. Um, you know, for example, coming up with an analytic solution on all of the people who watch Netflix, what they might want to watch, that could take a lot of expertise, a lot of time. It costs too much. Well, maybe we can use machine learning to just kind of short circuit that, that problem. And then the biggest one, at least for me, I am very, very lazy. I will work so hard not to have to work again. Um, so maybe, maybe it's a repetitive problem. Oh boy, I have to get up at 5 a.m. and look at a ton of plots to figure out if there's something going wrong with the detector system. I don't like getting up at 5 a.m. and looking at hundreds of plots. Maybe I can use a machine to do that for me. Um, usually this gets kind of modified with this idea of uh, modifications in a repetitive theme. So doing dishes, who loves doing dishes? <laughs> okay, you're weird. Uh, no, uh, so <laughs> uh, when, you, when you do dishes, right, you know what a clean dish looks like, but you can't 
orient the dish the same way to have a robotic arm give it an optimal cleaning every time? Analytically, you need to do something that says, ah, I know what a clean dish looks like and how to adjust my motions to properly scrub the dish. That's machine learning. So I, I sat there thinking, oh boy, bunch of people, different levels. Um, how am I, what should I teach? How do I start this? Four hours is not enough time to, to do this, this whole field justice. Um, you spend your whole life on one little corner of it, like with physics. Um, so I asked ChatGPT and I said, introduce, introduce to a bunch of physics grad students, um, introduce artificial intelligence and machine learning. And this, I won't read this. I'm not that cruel. Um, this is what it spat back. I literally copied and pasted it. Um, in fact, fun fact, this image of the robot is AI generated. And you can tell because it has eyes for ears. So that's one way you can tell. Um, so I, I said, okay, thanks. Thanks, ChatGPT. Definitely helpful, I suppose. But where should we begin, right? What should I start with? This first- is AI generated? Yeah, yes. Um, no, th this, no, I, this might be actually. <laughs> I didn't purposely choose an AI generated. Um, this is this is represent data science. Then you're trying to take a winding path, and it, you can get to the top of here, and you're not anywhere near close to the top. So, um, so what should you le learn first? And ChatGPT said this. Um, and I want to point out, it's a complex, and rapidly evolving field with many different algorithm techniques and frameworks to choose from. It can be overwhelming to try to learn everything at once. Instead, start by focusing on the basics: linear algebra, calculus, probability theory, and statistics. Yeah, that's totally true. That does not sound like fun to me. It can be fun, but we've seen a lot of math. Maybe there's a better way. Um, so I took a page out of uh, my childhood. For those that don't know, this is a beloved cartoon character named Miss Frizzle, who has a tagline in a show called Magic School Bus, take chances, make mistakes, and get messy. I'm an experimentalist. This sounds this sounds like a lot more fun. Um, if you don't know this, you can YouTube all the old episodes. Um, this informed my childhood. Uh, so, disclaimer: boring stuff before we start. It is very large. The topic of machine learning is voluminous. I'm never going to be able to do it justice in four hours, let alone forty hours. Um, and even then, I probably wouldn't have done it justice. It's very complex. If you get confused by applications and methods, that's normal, it's natural, it's okay. And it's rapidly changing. Uh, when I started learning, it's better now, it's still not perfect, but when I started learning um, a few years ago, I struggled to get anything to work. Why? Because they used a version of TensorFlow that was out last week and they updated it. And now it no longer works. Like it was changing so quickly that the things that I learned from one week to another or different or wrong. So what I'm going to try to do is, is give a, a little bit of a dip in the shallow end of a new pool. So this idea of it's a big field, how should I begin? Let me start taking steps so I can go online. I can start looking at articles and going, ah, I remember those keywords. There are some foundational concepts, which I'm going to try to hopefully get you guys to, uh, to see. And you can take back to your home institutions and your own problems and be as lazy as I am. Um, so two rules, be willing to be wrong is rule zero. Uh, it's not really a problem for, for ego. You don't know what the data is telling you. It's trying to tell you something, what you are assuming might be wrong. Uh, rule one is know your data, know your data. So I have to, I have to do this. I'm sorry, what is AIML? Um, this, I love this diagram because it, it really highlights the three main thrusts of, of machine learning, and that is unsupervised, supervised, and other, called reinforcement learning. Reinforcement learning is like uh, you're training an animal. When you, when you do my command, I'm going to give you a cookie, and if you don't do it correctly, I'm going to punish you. No animal cruelty here. But... That's the idea of reinforcement. So game AIs, real-time decision-making, 
you know, teaching uh, AI to play Mario and hop at the right times. That's a reward punishment kind of game uh, or thing. Unsupervised learning is clustering, uh, encoding, decoding, uh, dimensionality reduction, um, some meaningful compression. Uh, this is, I can't provide you experts label or a good reward punishment for Netflix viewers, but maybe there's commonalities I can find in the data and I can cluster them and then apply decisions to those clusters. It's a far easier problem. We're gonna focus on supervised learning for two main reasons. Reason one, it is the easiest, in my opinion, to get started with. It also tends to be the most accurate. And I, I'm putting that in quotation, big quotation marks. It tends to be the more accurate one because you're, you're judging yourself against the best known method, not against the perfect method. <laughs> so <laughs> it's a little easier to, to be, be right. Um, and this has two branches, which we will find very common in physics, uh, regression, getting a number out, numbers out, and classifications, which would be like cats and dogs or um, for one of my projects. This detector is performing good. This detector is performing bad. <laughs> uh, so that's, that's all in supervised learning. Um, and this also is uh, how babies tend to learn. So this is, he's almost seven now, but this was an old picture. This is my son uh, being read to by my mother. Um, and I remember one day uh, I went on, I think it was, I think it was Reddit's has a, a, you know, cute baby animals and he wanted to see animals and they weren't on TV. And so I was like, ah, you know, work. Um, and I started asking him like, what's this? And he's like, dog. And I'm like, yeah. And he's like, what's this? And I go, what's this? And he goes, dog. And I'm like, no, that's a cat. Um, because he doesn't know, but I'm supervising. I'm giving him the proper labels, cats and dogs. And every time we go through the book, every time through the book, it's called an epoch. Remember that word, epoch. Okay? Once through all the data, epoch. And after enough epochs, I could give him novel pictures and he would go, that's a cat or that's a dog. And I'd be like, you learned something. That's literally what people do. Um, so again, it makes it easier for me to understand. So what's the major parts? How are we going to actually accomplish this? Well, we have some data. And we're gonna feed it to this black box called a model. Not all ML solutions are black boxes, but a stereotype is that they are, and we'll be dealing with the ones that are because they're fun. I like emergent properties. So um, we have a model that's taking in that data and it needs to provide some output. And because we're doing supervised, we need to compute something called a loss. Um, we'll, we'll deal with this in just a little bit um, in more depth. Um, and from this loss, we can do something called backpropagation, which is updating our model to be better or to decrease our loss. Again, once through the data is an epoch. <laughs> so we go through the data, we compute our loss on that data, we use that loss to backpropagate, which is literally gradients, like one of the methods is stochastic gradient descent, is gradient descent, um, trying to go light on the math. Computers do the math for us. So the loss function actually ends up being uh, utterly key. And this is really the mathematical way of telling an AI what to learn. Yeah. Can you, for that, for the plot you had on the last page, with your son, is model, is dog the model that your son had in his mind? Like, where does, how does that go? My, my son's brain, so in, in this, in this analogy, the um, neural net is somewhere in here in this region. <laughs> and he's not learning, he is learning an abstraction of what a dog is, right? He's not memorizing every possible dog. So he is learning the model is, I know what properties I can abstract from the image given to classify. That's the model. It's the neural net. It's the, it's the thing that's driving the decision-making, whether it's regression or, or, or classification or telling Mario to jump. That's the model. And the output is dog. Yeah. In this case, in this case the output would be dog or cat, um, or I'm bored, I'm going to go take a nap, um, which, uh, yeah. <laughs> um, for regression, it might just be a, a number, you know, 3.8, and that, that's your output. Um, but in either case, we, 
the loss? Could you could you comment on the loss of bug pro propagation? Um, yes. When you say comment on the loss back propagation, um, yes, uh, I actually have. I don't. I think I have the end of this talk. You can get into the the, the math um, of it. Essentially, you can look at the change. Actually, you know what I'm going to say? Hold on to that question for like four more slides. It'll be a lot easier. I have some stuff I can point at and grunt, so that'll be better. Are you going to explain it in terms of cat dog and you saying no to cat? <laughs> I will do my best. There will be some math. I'm sorry. There'll be a little bit of math, but uh, we'll make it through um, before dinner. Then you can go to a place that has beer and everything will be forgiven. Um, so what is a loss function? And it's really key that you get the right loss function because it's telling the AI, the model, what it should learn. So I have this really morbid example. If your metric of success is a lack of cancer progression after three months, then if I terminate the patients, the cancer won't progress. I've solved the problem. Um, the, the other morbid joke I make with, uh, with the cancer, it's really easy to kill or, or destroy cancer. It's keeping the patient alive. That's the problem. Um, so this would be an example of a bad loss function. No cancer progression because an AI who has no sense of morality or or anything is just like okay, I. Um, and there's been some stories in the news recently about war games involving AI, um, and it butts up against this this idea of not quite the right loss function. And I do not want to trivialize this. Sometimes it's very difficult to get the right loss function, um, so you have to try multiple times. <laughs> um, and then you need to know your data. Before you, you explore anything, you really should explore your data. You need to, to, to know your data. Um, the representation of that data is dependent upon the goals you have, the techniques you're gonna use, and the data itself. If you're using cats and dog pictures, um, that's a different representation of data than the string of pixel values, which would be less helpful to teach my son with, <laughs> right? Uh, it's not a good representation for what I'm trying to teach him. Um, if you need relative geometric locations, the detector part here versus here, you may want to keep it as an image. Or maybe you do want to flatten it if you're just looking for the brightest the location of the brightest pixel. Maybe the flat interpretation would be better, easier to learn from. Um, then you just have an index that is the maximal, something like that. Um, seriously. Know your data, okay? I have wasted so much time because it's fun to build models and see how they perform, and I didn't stop and really know, explore my data. I mean, really know your data. <laughs> we're just having a problem now in my current work where we were talking with an expert and we thought we knew the data. We thought he knew the data. We thought he explained the data to us correctly. It turns out we did not know the data. <laughs> Um, and so we wasted probably, not wasted, wasted is too strong a word. Um, we deviated from optimal path for a couple of months in order to come to the conclusion that we should have looked at your data. Um, there's a fun example here. I'll let you guys click on in your own time. A uh, professor hid a gorilla in um, BMI, like diabetes data. And he basically gave uh, each student one of two problems exclusively. Uh, one of them basically had find the relationship between BMI and diabetes. And the other ones were just given the data and told like, you know, look at the data. And anybody who just plotted the two things would see a gorilla. <laughs> and the ones that had the, the thought, I need to find a specific relationship, rarely looked for a gorilla and actually missed the gorilla. If you look at your data, if you know your data, you will see the gorilla, you will know something is amiss. <laughs> Um, so again, we're going to be uh, using Google Colab. All the Python notebooks that I have prepared run in Google Colab. If you're like, I already do, I have Jupyter on my own laptop, whatnot. You have a question? Yes, uh, I'm just thinking about knowing the data. So <laughs> is this now where you go deep into analyzing the data or you just look at the structure of the data? Um, Right. Depending on your problem, it could be the answer to that, but yes. So I would say um, it's better to overanalyze your data 
then underanalyze it. In other words, look, are there correlations? Can you do what's called feature engineering? Maybe instead of sending it X and Y, I send the model X divided by Y because I know there's a physical relationship that's linear and X over Y, not X and Y independently. It could be easier to learn from. Um, it's that level where you need to take your system or your subject matter expert, which could be yourself, and you need to know how is this data coming about and what are the relationships, the correlations that are embedded in this data that I expect? So afterwards, then you apply uh, uh, ML. Then you do your feature engineering, and then you start building models. And one thing that I found as a physicist <laughs> um, with my friends who are physicists, uh, we tend to think about modeling in the sense of we get our data and we do a line of best fit. Um, and it's not quite that. When you're, when you're trying to build a uh, neural net, say, it's more grasping in the dark. You can try something that will not work. And it turns out that the answer is if you change one hyperparameter of your model a little bit. So it's really hard. There's not like, a, I can't give you the algorithm. I can't say, here's the data. You do this math, you apply this, this principle. You just, you know, you can write down your integrals and then everything is great, great. It's a lot messier than that. I'm sorry. It's a lot messier than that. Um, so uh, feel free to use any other system. You want a bunch of companies. If you've done some work and you're like, PyTorch, man, why are you using TensorFlow? Do it in PyTorch. I don't really care as long as you understand <laughs> the core concept. For those without laptop, it'll be great if you can make a friend um, and you can buddy up and do some of these tutorials together. Um, compare with others. See what worked for them, what didn't work for them. It's um, it's pretty great. Okay, here we go. <laughs> this is I promise this is like all the math. Um, <laughs> so what what I get from this? Um, this is what's called a multilayer perceptron or a dense neural net in which every node is connected to every other node. Is this the only layer type? No. Is this the only way to do this layer type? No, this is the easiest one for me to understand because you can write down the literal math. So what happens is you take in, each node gets an input value. This might be the pixel magnitude. This might be um, the temperature, the pressure, the humidity, the whatever that happens to be. And it, it will pass it through an activation function for input layers. They don't have it. It's just linear. And then you multiply it by the weight and add a bias and pass that result into the next layer. In fact, you pass that result into all the nodes of the next layer. So you end up getting these, these Ws. So this is connecting one to one. Uh, one to two, one to three, one to four, this would be two, one, two, 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 three, two, four, so on, so on, and until you get down to five in this case. And you keep, you keep doing that, and then you can look at what the output is going to give you, and what you're really training is what all these weights are along all the lines of this thing. So in the case of doing dogs and cats, I could represent my output as a vector. Um, yeah, as, a, as so you can imagine having a vector where the first in, index is catness and the second index is dogness. Okay. <laughs> um, and what your, your output would be would be a vector such that maybe you normalize it to one. The sum of these two indices would be one. And if index zero or the first index, is greater in magnitude, you say, ah, that's a cat. And the second one being greater means that's a dog. So always it's computing this mathematical object that we're interpreting to be the label cat or dog. So I, the idea would be uh, for my son, if I'm gonna go back to that, I don't know what features of the image he's extracting because he doesn't really know words yet. <laughs> and he can't describe a dog for me, but he's really accurate at it because he's, he's, he's modified these weights such that he can extract the proper features to allow him to best separate cats from dogs and then come up with a label for it. Um, 
back propagation, um, and I have a, uh, uh, ah, <laughs> I do have a couple links, um, the very generic for the math, but I'll try to explain back propagation um, in so many words. Uh, when you actually start doing this, you do things in what's called fast uh, batches, which gives you the stochastic part of stochastic gradient descent. Um, if you forget about stochastic uh, <laughs> batching um, in there, you essentially can take your loss function and you look at the D loss function over the D of all of your Ws. So now I know, I know depending on what my loss is or really the change in the loss function, how much I should wiggle all of these weights. And that's at its very basic. There are other optimizers, which we'll see, we'll use today, um, which do things much more sophisticated. They will do back propagation parameter by parameter. Then there are some that uses all of them. There are some that and you get momentum and learning rate. And at its core though, you take your loss, you look at how the loss changes depending on how you change these parameters and you invert that such that as, as I'm learning, as I'm computing my loss, I know how much I should be changing the Ds to decrease that loss. You're forming an error surface of that loss and you're literally walking that surface. How many dimensional surface? Well, how many Ws do you have? <laughs> so it's a little, it's a little hard. Um, I think I put in, yeah, this picture is lower dimension. You, you, all those Ws may put you here on the loss surface. And then you just use your, your you know, line of steepest descent. You're, you take a gradient and then you walk along the gradient some units and you can walk yourself for epoch down hopefully into the global minimum. Global minimum of loss means I have the most accurate and now I have my answer. Okay. Um, so I showed you the, the multilayer perceptron, the MLP. Yeah, go ahead. Go ahead. Am I right if I say the, the loss is the uncertainty? <laughs> uh, um, loss is not, it's not quite. Um, it depends. Okay. <laughs> it depends. You'll hear me say that a lot. Um, you could certainly write a loss function that will give you the uncertainty, but the loss function need not be an uncertainty. <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, it depends. <laughs> All of it. Uh, yeah. So the loss function was not on the previous slide. The output is not the loss function. No, the output is not the loss function. You use the output as an input parameter to the loss function. It's the, so you're computing the loss based on the output given. In the case of uh, cats and dogs, I would say, what vector did my son give me? Um, and then I would say, how close is that to one zero? That's my loss, is that comparison to one zero? Um, yeah, yeah. Just a follow-up question. So we, we always uh, aim at making the loss zero. You always wanna minimize the loss. And there's the mathematical underpinning is if you have a surface that instead of being uh, like concave is convex, um, that causes problems. Mathematically, right, you get runaway answers. And often when you hit those runaway solutions, you get models that give you garbage because <laughs> they're not well constrained. So there's a lot of mathematical underpinnings and um, a lot of structures designed to ensure that you, <laughs> you're trying to learn a concave thing that has a minimum. Because <laughs> if you don't, good luck to you. Um, there are ways you can try to take concave things and do fancy stuff, but at its core, got to have concave or you'll go to infinity and then get garbage. Um, convolution is the other common one. Um, when you're talking about neural nets, are these the only two? No. Can I make my own layer? Yes. Are we going to do that? God, I hope not. Don't, don't go that far into the deep end. Um, <laughs> there be monsters. So convolutions involve taking these these kernels, so in this case, a one, two, one, zero, 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 minus one, minus two, minus one kernel, and just scanning it over, doing a little matrix multiplication and recording the values, or in this case, I think the sum, or doing the, the, the sum 
in, in this little feature map. And one thing that you'll notice about the feature map is you get 40s here and here. And this is detecting, this kernel is actually detecting the edge for you. It's telling you that right here, there's, a, there's, there's an edge, tens to zeros. So it lies right in between these two. So you can have kernels that detect different features. As I change the kernel, I'm actually pulling out different features of the house. You might have some kernels in your layer that look for roofs. Look for fuzzy ears. Um, looks for you know dog nose versus cat nose tend to be very different. So you have a, a kernel in my son's mind um, <laughs> that that is hopefully setting these values inside each filter or kernel to extract the right data from the image, so you can make the classification accurately. And today, in the time we have remaining. We're going to do the MNIST data set. I hate the MNIST data set. Everybody should do the MNIST data set. Uh, the reason I, I hate it is it holds so much promise. You do it. You're like, oh my gosh, I'm training an AI. It's doing something. Now I'm going to put my own data in. And then you look into the load data function and it's two and a half thousand lines and you go, what? <laughs> it's not, doesn't need to be that complicated. They've done a lot of optimization to make it portable and robust and how they stored the data isn't how a normal person would like store the data. Um, <laughs> so there's reasons that it's that awful, the loading function. Do not get scared by that. Don't look into it. Tomorrow we will get into loading my own data, which is where the fun really gets going. But for now, um, where, where did I find this MNIST? I gave Fred, do you have the flash drives? Uh, or yes. On Indico, you can also go to the link that I posted as my talk that takes you to a folder, and there should be a Python notebook um, in there labeled like MNIST tutorial or something. <laughs> MNIST something something. Tensorflow MNIST. Tensorflow MNIST. Yes, thank you. Um, and you can upload that to Google Doc. I will be here. I will try to help troubleshoot tech support. If you've never used Oh, not Google Docs, sorry, Google Colab. <laughs> oh boy, <laughs> Google Colab. If you do not have Google Colab or unsure how, um, I will be around, we can log you in. It's, I think there's even a link at the top of this uh, notebook. You click on that, it'll take you to Google Colab. <laughs> it's like, yeah, you wanna run this in Google Colab? Okay, one per row or you can download if you go to the uh, uh, timetable. Go to the it's a browser thing, open your browser and do a Google search for Google Colab. Oh yeah. They don't have a Google account. Oh, um, um, you don't, okay. oh you'll make we'll it. Talk. We'll talk, we'll talk. I'm sure we can find some way to do uh, it. Yeah. Maybe I'll let you do it on my laptop or I have it. Oh, I <laughs> use uh, our option is Jupiter or? Uh, yes, wherever you run Jupiter at, I have to. Yeah, yeah. Then you should be fine. You can just do that. You do not have to use Google Colab. I just set it up so that it works for sure there. It can work at other locations though. Yeah, it's, it's my choice not to use Google. Um, yeah, yeah, no, no. I certainly might respect the choice. I understand that. I tried. Uh, I tried to think of which. You know, some people are in uh, Amazon Web Services, which has a similar. Feature parity product, which would also run this probably <laughs> fine. Um, and then, yeah. Um, and then you should be able to. Oh, no, I have to sign in first. Yeah, probably. And just make a new empty file and copy all that. Or you can import, you can upload. So if you get a hold of the flash drive, which has all of them, or you can download that specifically from the link on the Indico. And you can go save link as, yeah. save it as dot I pi and B. And then you can upload it that way as well. Do you have a USB to USB C Ooh. adapter? Ooh, I don't know. I, I can. Flash time is useful. Okay, got one. Nice. Awesome. <laughs> This is the problem with all these tech things. It's like, let's demo or tutorial, and there are a million ways this is going to catch and have them work. work yeah. all the time. Load the files off the flash drive and pass the flash drive on. So now we have five of them. Oh, 
us. So if you're done with the flash drive, pass it on. Or go to the link and download this one in particular. And you call it AIP. I need a pass. It doesn't matter what we call it as long as, long as the end is IPI and B. Yeah, IPI and B. Thank you very much. You can read slash run all the executable uh, cells. Okay, go through and run executable. Yeah, so you can read what the different parts okay. they're having you do. Okay. I'm mainly making sure that everybody at the end of the day yeah. can accurately right. adequately oh. run a notebook. So okay. starting tomorrow, we'll be making our own. Okay. We're basing the stuff. So okay. don't panic. It's okay. We'll get through it. Okay. Uh, let me uh, show you. Does this control? Oh, no, you can check it. Uh, no, I can't. I want to post a, uh, like, this a couple of helpful thing. things that I probably should put in my so slide. Sit this one. Okay, great. Great. Um, is there a button on the screen? Yeah. Aha. Okay. Oh, I'm to Oh, they may not let me. Okay. Yeah. Now I'm in the And then we can say, oh, we have this on the. Um, anybody need the thumb drive? Oh, no. Um, I got it okay. on. Install it, and then all right. Make sure to do. Oh, yeah. yeah, I got it. Just creates, it just it really runs through loops and talks with losses. Yes. Uh, what was it? It's pretty much, it's pretty much it doesn't easy. technically have to be when the banks start recognizing. So I guess that are did it shot. Uh, yeah, the accuracy goes up. Oh. Um, well yeah. <laughs> um, I don't know. I got this thing. Okay. So then I'm not a Mac user, so I don't know. Uh that's fine. Presentation time. Those thumb drives moving around. Yes. Thumb um, uh, here's one. Okay. Uh, like the text cells. Uh, Everyone, you can thumb drive. Everyone. And then you have these Python cells, and then you can either run them by the play button, or you can do shift enter. Yeah, yeah, I think there are yeah, yeah. 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 many. So this this would be. Yeah. When you need a thumb drive. Yeah, you got it running. Yeah. Um, Where's the yeah, last thing? Other the validation box. You know, but I, I was so fun. It explains it. And yeah. <laughs> it's just we tomorrow for the second pack. history should have loss, bow loss, um, bow accuracy. And Everything working? Accuracy. What were we thinking? Creating a input pipeline. Isn't the data set the input? What's a pipeline? Um, so you remember I mentioned there were like 2,500 lines that are used to actually load the data? That's the pipeline. So they Google has. In their infinite wisdom has yeah. decided to make these things called or TensorFlow in their yeah. infinite wisdom TF data sets, which does all the like, let's say the MNIST data set is zipped. Yeah. You need to open the zip file, yeah. read from the zip file. Yeah. You need to do so. The input pipeline is how do you go from standard data sets yeah. in this yeah. yeah. to ready to input data? Oh, ah, okay. Um, and maybe I should also have. For those that get done with this really quick, um, input images, 28 by 28. What? No, they're just 28 pixels by 28 pixels. <laughs> And they're not really images. See, that's the other thing. This whole input pipeline, it's a 28 by 28 array of like normalized 
lightness values. Uh, okay, okay. Ah. <laughs> so the input pipeline, like, I don't know any what I need to do is astrophysics data. Okay. Is it like a it calibration? Is, you're taking this data from yeah. the machine, and then you're getting it ready to actually do software. Yeah, 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 yeah. So you can think about like if you're doing, um, if you're going to do AI on astrophysical signals, right? Yeah. Um, I do my own astrophotography. I'm getting back into. Yeah, I, I can show you. So I, uh, you do the stacking procedure, okay? Right, which stacks all your exposures together. Yes. That could be part of the input pipeline because what I want to feed to the model is my completed stacked image, okay. right. not each individual image. Okay. So the pipeline would be: How do I access the right folders? Stack the right, calibrate and stack yes. to give me that would be the input pipeline. But that's what it makes sense then why it's it yeah. could uh, be no, they're not. Right? It could be, yeah, exactly. Uh, exactly. Exactly. I have tomorrow's will not be twenty five. <laughs> I'm telling people, don't open it. Don't open, it. don't look into that box. Don't okay. look into the, to that box a little bit tomorrow. Today, no. get this thing to run and then play around. Then then play around with it, do it with that. Uh, uh, convolution uh, layer. Uh, uh, save it. I'll be back. Save it. Then from inside, there's a code on TensorFlow MNIST on AI in the Right. So you yeah. want to upload that to Google Colab. And then yeah. I want to see yeah. you successfully run that Python over. Oh, so what is this? Yes. Oh, you can do the upload. Yes. Yeah. And then choose the file, find it, upload it, run all the code stuff. Okay. Read the text. My, yeah. my main thing is I want the, the main thing I want today for everybody. End of the day, have the run ability to run a Python notebook that uses TensorFlow. Yeah. They'll need it okay. for the future. So that's primarily the thing. If you're already done with it, what was it? You're sitting there like, yeah, I know this stuff. So then my challenge to you would be the shift over. way it's done in there is okay. with a uh, multi-layer perceptron. Can convert it to a yeah. convolution. And just shift return. Here the results. Okay. Great. All right. Thank you. Yeah. Yep. Oh, you're already. I'm, I'm just yeah. messing with the number of epochs. I'm seeing the. Yeah. So run all the lines. Yeah. And you can be behind the doing to see how the idea of what you're doing. Yeah. You don't have to do any. So you can thumb in which case then I have to say go try to modify try to see where it's first setting and play around. Yeah. Okay, oh, yeah, second. Like, oh, I saw this one first. I'm coming around. Okay. So that's what you're gonna kill it. Right. Well, this is the training set. You want to do the same thing for a test set. Yes. Did you get the flash drive? Yeah. So my okay. Oh, you're two files. Yeah. 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 That's what Now there are two types of of um, yes. 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 So essentially what that means is like you change that number and then see how the model works. For example, if you did like 10,000 and 10,000, it might be more like garbage. 
because it can't well, be like, co bonded with that. That's 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 and as you play it in your app, yeah, the big screen is like kind of a lot of bad. Right, so all the different folders you execute, and I'm making sure that you have the set up true that we can run. That's to be able to work And just executed that, which is right. No, that's a good You could have actually just like, it was this line, and then it's three. I put some of my version in that line. Oh, yeah. It's in real life. Code in there, so now it's going to process it. Okay. Yeah, so it's going to load the run package, run also the data set. So you see it's okay. going to be, and then okay. it's, well, it's thinking to, right yeah, now. It's going to take a while. It's going to take a little bit. But we know there is. You might have the right idea. Read the, the tags. Yeah. Yeah. It looks like, okay. And then once it's done, there should be another clue. Oh, so yeah. No, it's so, done. So it took seven now, seconds. Now, seven seconds. Now, it's not a clue. And then just check the shift. And you're on the other side. And then you read about what you're going to do. We want to understand what you're going to do. So it's going to run. Sparks of a. In here, okay. I'm sure I'm doing it by trying to get everybody to feel it. This is our space, like so. Uh, and all the problems are on data. So, basically, like to go to the edge that's going to help. And it's like, yeah, and then it's that we should have done really early. The line now is a challenge for you, and that is we are currently solving it with the internal statement. Maybe we're just going to change the box to help essentially. You can use like a bunch of different other functions that you can Yes, if you want to this one. Oh, yeah, yeah. So you're the code line. You have the little play button. You're now running the so that number you can make it bigger or smaller and like a train of bottom faster for example, you just get everything up. Yeah, if you want to mention some now, or um, as people are getting done or more knowledgeable, help those around you. I think there are a few people who are probably already done with tutorial one. I have some experience. I got an error. I got an error. I got an error. I and it smartly knows when it should get currently does not need to be time in front of new feature, right? Because, yeah, 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 no, before it was all, yes, so it's not for how it's on. I remember the yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. a year and a half ago. And yeah. I was off. Honda, the right in in drivers. And you had the right in in drivers, the right version of Tensor. It was Yeah. Now you have to have yeah. 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 Within this, you through values I just have that the way I do it is if you, um, Linux, there's like NVIDIA S1, and then you run the thing and see if it uses it. Though for ML, it should also be using. You don't get any speed up in the minute. Okay. With convolution, what you do, um, and there's there need to be some special flag that you need to put in 
I'd have to go look at the documentation. Everything we're going to do. So you ran the notes based on work. So this page is fairly on uh, is a vector, oh, right? Okay. Yeah. So try to plot, you know, map plot the right. So so okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Everybody's in different heights, so it's like really hard. Like okay, <laughs> I don't want anybody to feel like I don't know that, so I'm out in four days. So we're gonna work. You don't today. You don't want to just like see how we're forming it. That's why. Yeah. And it's more hypothesis. That's ELT initial views. Um, or you can use chat GPT yeah. on Zoom. <laughs> uh, but um, try plotting. The validation loss and the regular loss. That's a shift. Look at those curves. Ah, more about the curves. And then, once you've done that, you should assume that I'm a little bit more popular. What you should see is it's like dense. 128 dense, dense. I'm trying to convert that to a huge on the documentation. A lot of information, though. So, you know, I'm good. Okay. So, shift there. And so, we get the city all the way down. Every cell to offer this police is in non change. So, now, in fact, this is the old part of At the bottom, where you see that's an array. Yes. Can you plot on that array? Do you know that plot? Yeah, yeah. 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 Just, just, just plot um, it. Yeah, as it's indexed. Because each each line is demo. You can do all. So you could do a convolution and then do it into like a. Yeah, so you can just here you do looking for a map plot that's not high as or just LD or whatever the standard. You know, that I just created. Is great. Is, I don't know. So, what this it is, is um, so my right. picture, I have the black box. Yes. Yes. Well, it's, it's, all this pipeline. Zero to 10. This is actually the center of the world. Yes. Okay. This is so the, this is where they're So, it's just so going to be like now. Yeah. Just call yeah. 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 And then, then and now that you got it running, now you have to see has right the actually building that model. It's designing the topology yeah, yeah, of yeah. this. Well, yeah. it's it's actually sending that loss function. No, 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 and so taking it once we laid on the triangle. So I can see the loss go down. And that's an indication that it's that it's uh, learning and because it's yeah, yeah. it's decreasing that loss. Why did it learn? That's it's like learning. So the data set itself are these um, 20 by 20 pixels of handwritten numbers. And it's learning how to take those in, which is great if you're a post office and people have different handwritings and you don't want somebody having the like, okay, this goes to Montana. So it goes, no, you just put it. Let me, when did you learn this? When did you say you were Oh, it's in the triangle. So in the triangle is. An example, yeah, and then the, right? the category. This is a one. <laughs> this is also. A one. This is also a one. And then all of the It had the labels in it, which is part of the reason why we dig into the code. That pipeline is like twenty five hundred lines of code, really complicated things to give you the simple triangle <laughs> object. Um, 
don't worry too much about how they made the triangle. We're going to do something easier tomorrow. But play around with the plot. Plus, plus, the plus, 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 See how yeah, it is. Yeah, I mean, just it play is. around with your, your fitting. What about 30 epochs? 50 epochs. How does it change? Does it, you know, what does it learn? Does it learn better? Does it learn better? Um, yeah, and then also take that model yeah, you're just just it. Yeah, mine is and change it from dense yeah, to something yeah, else. What else? Yeah. Just, so you start just playing around with that black box, seeing how where are the next qualities and do some learn quicker. Um, some learn so that this model takes some are better. This one is hurt. This one is like the picture. Oh, um, if you look at the model, it's But it's right there. Just understand that there are earth goals out there, but make mistakes, get messy. That's the that's the overriding by the end of today, I'm hoping every this function is going to allow you to make a friend with a laptop and they will know how to take you in a Python function. Just run it turns using tensor. It's not technically an array, but some iteration. It's right to be a Python function. They did in 2021. This one will be new data. Okay. So so you know what that means. Then, like, make that pipeline to be 2000. Much easier. And then you'll play around trying to shift the solution to it. It'll, yeah. Yeah. I have a question about the content. Yeah. Just like the oh, yeah. yeah. Um, there should be a link to the documentation. Did you find it? Yeah, yeah. We just found like an example. But then what is the first one? Oh, uh, yeah. So that's <laughs> so um, it's the number of filters, so the number of those little boxes, and then you'll have some numbers that are fine numbers. So you have one box, right? one group. That's room. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. yeah. It's not uh, yeah. yeah. a yeah. shelter. Yeah. And then yeah. there's the thing called Stride, yeah. which you'll see in there, which is one yeah. over or yeah. maybe yeah. two yeah. over. Yeah. Gotcha. And then you have kernel size, yeah. which is that yeah. by two yeah. by two. Yeah. Right. Three by two box, three by three. What else can you do? Classification. Something. Right. Just to see how how well you do it. So you can all talk to the small by two. Can I change the number? Right. Yeah. 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 You, you shouldn't today really need to do any code. Yeah, it's, it's, you just go on the stuff and then we'll yeah, modify. Okay, um, so let me just about everything. Yeah. We should have gotten a range. Yeah, yeah. Oh, wow. yeah. No, so, no, so, no, so, so, yeah, I just, and so I use mock this array. <laughs> index now. So, I just. No, no, no. no, no. <laughs> So, yeah, so, I need to copy the points. Yeah, yeah. Pop it. Yes, yes. This number we need to write. Yeah, pop the survey. In the RD. Yeah, but what is Yeah, I just let it let the actual Oh, in depth and these numbers. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. 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 yeah, because it turns out there should be, I think, 10 numbers. Yeah, yeah. You should be able to see a curve that goes down. And that shows it's learning something. Whether it's going to learn the right thing or not remains to be seen. I'll be right there in a moment. Oh, is that a very well, but it's making a lot of fun. So, like, the medium. Yeah, I'm sure this is not a it already starts to break. It's important to be able to do it. And then you're taking out just to what I did one to this. But the end of the day, like, I ran every. You ran everything. It must be. So this is basically like, instead of going to the basically, this is a percent and a quarter. This function knows when it goes out. 
knows where to unzip the file and knows how to read the file. That's fine. Like, it's always changing. Here, I it's trying to be nice to you. Um, <laughs> uh, yeah, exactly. Because you need to plan in order to use there was a, the vocabulary. Another nice. That's I'm gonna just make sure you need on this computer. Huh? I think mm -hmm. most people are at the point now where yeah. they're getting it to run. Yeah. Wow. Okay. Oh, I, I should. So, oh. Make the cell bigger. That's the limit. Y axis. Yeah. Y axis yeah. of uh, what are we put in here? Yeah. Maybe it goes the Yeah, like you remember the good minimum. Yeah, maybe it was one chop. Yeah, maybe it was one Anybody else? I'm going to ask. So, so it's not just yes. like, yeah. for the next one. Yeah. 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 Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, let's copy this. Yeah. Oh, 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 yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 It takes two it doesn't add two by two and paste it right here. Add something to the two by two. Yes. But you can you could also call Mama after it's done. At the very end, that go bad each layer. Oh no, this is not ignored for this to work. So yeah, hopefully you can do all these things. So you should see the house and pop the two flat. And that'll be that. It's what it takes. Somehow it just kept repeating. So that's not how it It will know the really hard advanced. Try to do it in the constellation. How does it actually happen? Well, you just turned out to it. That's not true. It shows you see the premier movies again. Change one plus five years. Um, so, okay, uh, you're yeah, almost there. Um, get rid of the uh, definitely create the first one, yeah, and then me, I said, try to mess with the trap. Why don't you change the number of nodes from 128 to another number? I don't care. Let's do this, yeah, yeah, make mistakes, get messed up. Yeah, messy, messy. Yeah, messy, Rosmin doing stuff, yeah, where's Frizzle? 
Um, I would plot two things. I would plot vowel loss and loss. Um, what do those mean? We, I, we'll deal with it tomorrow. <laughs> it, no, it's not output. You are correct. It's, oh, let me try this. You know, I've to go to the city factor everywhere because it's like you're to. Now I need to log in and actually can't the city of 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 or no, I just, uh, run the, I just read what you wrote here, try to understand what's written. Yeah, no, no, it's okay. It's okay. Um, I didn't write most of that. Oh, this one, that's not great. But um, what I'm hoping you see is that, like step one, is the creation of that triangle, that data. Like step two, the evaluation pipeline is really helping um, define how you're going to take its output to the loss. Yeah. And if you look in the compilation, there's a, there's a line that's like model equals, that's setting up the topology that's in the black box. And after that, they do model.compile. And in that model.compile, they set up a loss and they said how you're going to traverse the error surface. Then you call model.fit. And hopefully you get curves that are decreasing for your loss and that loss. That means it's learning because it's minimizing that loss. That's or um, let me get this. Um, you have to kind of fight your best instincts as a business to just getting into this like one step at a time. Let's just make sure everybody can get to the first base and then we'll get to the next one, not all at once. Like there's an underlying theory, but no theory, I got it all. No, it doesn't count. <laughs> um, I'm, I have an example. So I have a question about what you just said. So like, first of all, I love math. Yeah. But second of all, like when I'm doing that, I need to have uh, yeah, base. That's why I wanted to know about your kid and the dog. I need to know like the, the, the just the, so then just just the what I yeah, like, yeah. do. Yeah. And that's yeah. my problem with this. I don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and, and it'll become clear, I think, in the next couple of, yes, just really have to, it's, I liken it to, um, I'm going to be a mechanic, I can understand how the general combustion engine works, if you take me to a garage and open up a car, I'm going to destroy the thing, right, you can understand the mathematics underpinnings and then sit down to make a machine learning algorithm, and you'll never be able to do it, because you haven't gone through those first steps of just like, in code, what are the basic pieces? Yeah, yeah. Right. Which hopefully this is starting to lay out. We need to create that triangle. This does it very complicated. Tomorrow we're going to do that much simpler. I don't see a triangle. <laughs> well, the in the pipeline is a triangle. Is that triangle in the in the plot that I that I I showed that had the black box and the triangle? Yes, yes. Step one is the triangle. Model equals is setting up that black box. And the model.compile has that um, loss, output loss loop. Yes. And TensorFlow handles that back propagation bit yeah. for you. And, and is the model in that? Is that true? No, the, the, the model is the set of weights for all the connected nodes. Very different. Okay. It, it's, yeah. It's, so when you, when you think about modeling a physics problem, yes. um, you're coming up with, you take laws, you have your input data, you make predictions, yes. error predictions, yes. warm and fuzzy. <laughs> <laughs> the model is basically, we're trying to figure out what laws are applicable, what, um, oh what feature. I'm too lazy to do that. Yes. I might not know. Yeah. So what the, what the model is trying to learn is what parts of the data should I emphasize or ignore in order to produce the best output? And it's a very generic statement. That's a very generic statement. It's how, exactly. Because that loss is setting up an error surface and you want to minimize that error surface. What does error mean? 
it's your problem. But this, this way you said it was beautiful because he told me, it's like when you choose the, when you have the test points and then the training points, yeah. That's yeah. yeah. You, you do this thing and then how far away are these other guys you did? We're even... going to, and from the question I've gotten, I might um, this evening duck out uh, the 7.30 thing and modify my talk tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but the whole point is tomorrow you will give us a data set. I will have the image, you will have the labels. You will need to take them in. They're CSVs. It's really simple. It's not bad. And then you'll parse them and you'll say, ah, this is datum. This is the target I'm, I'm going for. This is a different datum. This is the different target I'm going for. What are the targets? What you want the response to be. Because your loss function. Oh, you just want to minimize the loss function. That's what period thinks. Period. <laughs> That's why it's so important. I did um, all of it. I set a charge. And I also used boosted decision tree. Mm -hmm. It was also the it further analyzes the did it, uh, like all uh, did it uh, as we do previously, just by cuts with the analysis we prefer with boosted decision tree. And it's all it was also a question about minimizing the loss. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. It it all is like always, I could be flippant and I've stood up in front of here and be like. This is the loss function. I've defined it mathematically. You now know machine learning. Good night. That's exactly. <laughs> Put it on your resume. Uh, so it made it sound like it looks like I'm not trying to push you in the right direction and then you're grasp, grasping at straws in the dark. But hopefully over the next couple of days, some of this, oh, I've seen that word twice now. <laughs> ah, I got <yeah>, okay. <laughs> to allow you to hopefully go out and when you go online, you see somebody describe an example, you go, ah, yeah, epoch, right. I'm lost. Ah, okay. I know what this, this means, even though specifically I can't give you the loss. 